Hey guys and gals, what's up? Be and I'm back again today for another fantastic video. Today it's going to be a little bit more expanded of us talking about the value and importance of focusing on one march at a time. And I'm going to talk today about really all the areas that you really need to prioritize this. And we're also going to show you how you can make the most out of your march and everything you can do to power it up as fast as you can as efficiently as you can so let's start with what's the most important thing right now in the game that you need to have a high powered march for right now for for me <clears throat> right i'm this account completely free to play I, i've only spent five bucks here for the head start just to get, unlock the second building queue you'll notice like my number one my my yeah. highest power march is 21902 Right, so decent for where I'm at free to play wise. Uh, you'll also notice that if we take a look at the rankings, you'll see that the strongest is 440809. And then if we come down, right, the level four city is, I think, 31 for something. And so, I mean, you can see right here, right, there's what, 15, 16 people that are over the garrison power for a city, right? And, and let me explain this. Cities are the most important thing early on in the game, arguably even throughout. There's not going to be a lot of PvP fighting in the early game, early to mid game of a server slash kingdom's development. <clears throat> so the most important thing is really focusing that one march at a time. And you need to have, right, you have wall durability, right, where if we click on the outside, you'll see it's 80 million, right? All this really means is that you just have to attack the wall. You don't have to have a specific troop power minimum you just have to hit it and whatever your troop power is goes towards the wall durability right so it's just a matter of enough people hitting it enough times to get rid of the 80 million then if you click on the center that's when you of a city that's when you see the garrison power number of garrisons right there's four pillars or four garrison uh branches that are in a city once you deplete the wall this is where you really need to have a ma your main troop higher than what the garrison power is of the city. Now, for players that have a lower troop power than what the garrison power is, you can still do damage, right? You'll still incur dead on the city's garrison troops. It's more of a slow tick, so it still helps, but it is. It's not gonna. It's not. It's gonna take a lot longer for it to garner you a win against a garrison than it will someone who's already has a troop. A march that's over the garrison power this is why it's extremely important to really focus one march at a time and so we're going to talk about just a couple ways that you can be as efficient as possible right when it comes to uh, leveling up your your march the first one is obviously the general right using action points for attacking gnomes and this isn't to be confused with the gnome bosses because the gnome bosses are just going to yield you your dragon chest and some additional resources. The gnome bosses, the, the gnomes themselves are the ones that are actually going to yield you the experience. And again, we can even give you an example here. Watch. So you'll see here when I was attacking this level three, right? I just got some resources. I didn't get anything. When I was attacking a regular gnome, though, I can scroll down. You'll see the EXP that's gained, right? Just to give you a visual. So again, action points are going to be probably one of the biggest primary areas because it's going to let you attack gnomes, which is going to yield you the highest amount of XP that you can get for leveling up your march. Then you're going to have stamina points, right? This is going to go towards increasing your, uh, again, this is from Well of Time, right? You're going to be able to uh, get uh, use raids if you want to do them for any of the ones you've three-starred. You can do the quick raids on those. That's going to let you go in and level up your Immortals grade, right, or their boost, if you will. Um, and that's where you can click here. I can go gain, right? It tells me where I have to get to to get these, and I can level these up. Uh, then you, again, you right, you have the general just starring. These are going to come from the market, and then anything you pull from Hall of Immortals. EXP, this is just going to go from scrolls that you get as well. So the reason, now let's just talk about element types for, for a minute. So with element types, the big thing here, right, is that remember, right, you get the bonuses here for, you get the 20% magic and physical defense, then you get the 20% attack for physical, magical, and then you get the 10% HP if you have five of the same type. The reason why it's good to focus on one type at a time is because it lets you, it allows for you to hyper-focus your investment. 
So, for example, when you look at my Immortals, right, this is an ideal setup that you should have. You'll notice that I have four Immortals that I'm leveling right now. Everyone else that you see here is one, right? This is how you really want your Immortals to look like. Uh, again, there's an Ashes here as well. This is how the beginning setup. So the reason why I just went with water is because, one, you get a lot of free Helena Troy sculptures from the seven-day event when a new server starts. And if it's still out when you're watching this video, again, it's great to take advantage of. You don't really have to worry about things like Arena or PvP. You need to worry about having the highest level, uh, the highest powered one troop march that you can, because that is going to allow for you to farm higher level gnomes on the map, which is going to get your immortals more experience. It's going to allow for you to take higher level gnome bosses, which is going to allow for you to get a better yield on return of investment for dragon excuse me, from dragon crystals, right, to level up and then skill up your dragons eventually. Uh, and then again, it's also going to allow for you to contribute and help taking higher level cities faster, right? So those are the three biggest things. And again, that's why you see me kind of min-maxing, right? This is a term that we use in other games too as well, where you're, you're putting the minimum amount of investment in to get the maximum amount of return, right? And then what you can do from here is you can then focus on working on secondary marches, kind of like your mid to late game composition that you want to work on, right? This is just a beginning starting composition that I'm going to use from the, from the early to the mid game, right? You can start farming immortal crystals from the market, from Hall of Immortals, and work on a end game composition, right? So if you want to go any of the elements, you can work on that late game. If you just want to have it be four legendaries, right? You can start working on that while you're working on this one. So my focus here is I'm just going to level up for my water comp. It's extremely basic, right? I have Lancelot, I have Helena Troy, Brynhild, then I have Merlin, and I got him just because I had spent the 4 99 for the head start, which even if you spend a dollar, right, on a 99 cent daily deal, you'll still unlock Merlin. So again, unlocked, I'm focusing predominantly on leveling up my purple and then my blues, right? So I'm working on my, uh, excuse me, working on my elites and then I'm working on my rares, right? So I'm going to save the epic for last. And the reason why is because the epics take the most amount of soul crystals, your universal purple crystals, to use in the market to farm, uh, to farm immortals, uh, excuse me, shards, uh, or crystals more specifically. So I'm going to focus on leveling my blues and my purples first, then I'll do the epic. Um, and this is really the recommendation that I that I would give to anyone as well, right? Uh, I'm, I'm kind of doing this one-two-one one split, where I'm going blue, two purples, and then the yellow, right, or the, or the, the epic. Um, other people's compositions, they might include more epics. In my opinion, I think this is probably one of the better starts if you're able to find an element, and I'm not sure there is a specific element uh, an element that offers two of the uh, elites that you're going to get here. Uh, so again, right, the idea is I just kind of go with a one-two-one. One. I'll, I'll level this water comp out, I'll max them out as much as I can while I work on my secondary comp. So let me talk about a couple ways that you can do this. The best thing is you want to go into your alchemy lab, right? You want to basically, from what you see here, right, I am just doing nothing but uh, but dismantling any of the any of the immortals that I'm not going to use right and this is like the best thing to do in my opinion you just want to keep getting rid of these ones that you're just not going to use and then you just refine them you can do the same thing with your uh, equipment right so like equipment I'll just like as you can see I barely have anything here because I've just gotten rid of it that's why I've been able to level up my equipment and equipment is interesting because you every five levels for the equipment you'll get a resonance bonus right so all of your equipment has to be at the same level like 5 10 15 20 etc and then you'll eventually get additional bonuses from that so just something to keep in mind as well when you're working on that and you can see here right so i have everything i'm working on everything to 25 everyone else is at 20 um, oh, excuse me, with the exception of uh, this guy, I have to upgrade the staff to get the 20 bonus. But again, right, and then same thing with levels, right? The great thing is that it, it, this, it costs the same amount of experience at the moment for every type of element grade, uh, which is, is interesting because in, in other games, typically it would cost more experience for a higher immortal uh, if you're trying to level them up than it does for a lower tiered level immortal. So again, keep in mind, these are some of the big areas, right? And then you're just going to farm for in the market you're just going to come to the market as you can see i have no more refresh scrolls um, i use all my refresh attempts i've already burned through all my scrolls right that's why i've been able to get 
uh, Brynhild and working on Lancelot too as well. Uh, and again, these are just what you want to do. You click refresh, right? You don't don't have to use the green gems, right? But just use your dailies and then use your refresh scrolls. And you're just going to farm for the elites and the rare immortals first. And anytime you see them come up, only using your purple, not your green, is my recommendation to start. And you just grab these, as many as you can, and you just check it every day until you level them up. This is one of the best things you can do. Now, whether you choose water, which is my recommendation because it's the easiest to farm, or you choose another element, that's fine as well. But just pick four, stick to them in the early game, level them up as much as you can, and then you can worry about transitioning to a late game composition at, again, with no pun intended, at a later time. Uh, so again, that's my recommendation, guys, for what to do with your immortals when you're focusing them in the beginning right and then you can work on the other areas right and again also with mysterium mysterium is another area that having a high level um, one or a primary march power is going to let you just keep getting as far as you can in mysterium it'll give you some extra free resources right same thing with well of time um, right there's a lot of benefits to it so anyways i hope you guys enjoyed this video um, as it's something i've really been wanting to make for a while because i even noticed some players in other alliances that i see right They'll, they'll have high power, but they may not have the highest march. And, and I've even worked with some of the players in our alliance where I'll go in and they'll screen share or they'll screenshot me pictures of their immortals and I'll kind of work with them. So I'm hoping that this video will just be a great tutorial for how to really do a proper investment and a, and a proper respecking for focusing on one troop on one march and then how to focus on doing a min-max investment for each of the Immortals in that as well. Uh, with that being said, I'm out. Until next time, and again, as always, guys, you can check out links uh, for official Infinity Kingdom resources in the description if you guys want to join Server 6. Um, if you're interested in joining our Discord for our Infinity Kingdom section, again, I'll have links along with our Immortal Breakdowns, our uh, Beginner Free-to-Play guide that my buddy Yori and I worked on. Uh, you guys can find all of that and more in the description down below. Catch you later.